Okay, good evening, good evening. So we are doing a question and answer session overview of the ePluribus Unum platform. Uh, our guests this evening are Mary Lou and Nerva. And I'm going to uh, yield the floor and lean, let Dino um, start the uh, presentation. Thank mm. you. Thank you, thank you, Kim. Uh, so what um, I'm going to be uh, going over here is our uh, digital asset exchange, uh, e pluribus unum. So there's, um, and I know that uh, you guys are very busy, so we're reviewing the site. Um, that's uh, why we're doing this here, is so I can answer some of the questions of, of those things that you don't really uh, understand. So, but I'm just going to briefly cover it. So, uh, this is the welcome page, uh, e pluribus unum. Uh, and here you have the swap button and the white paper. Uh, that's information and background on uh, the use cases of tokens, digital assets uh, that can be purchased and also exchanged um, as both utility, you know, for particular service um, uh, within our ecosystem, our community, and also uh, for um, something that also uh, creates um, additional uh, value uh, to the asset. So the asset also grows in its value while it's on the system. Um, and there's the introduction, and I'm not going to go through all of this, just by its section, uh, this is the, the coin swap, uh, being able to swap between the tokens uh, on the exchange that uh, are native uh, to e Floribus Unum. And then we have uh, the staking um, uh, capabilities. Uh, and we also have a description of the tokens here. And explaining the decentralized uh, distributed network. And then down here we have the tokenization of each token. This is our stable coin. This is uh, the EPU uh, stable coin. And this one is backed by silver. It's paired with silver. Uh, Sujuris. Uh, status is one of our uh, native um, tokens. And I uh, go into um, the function and meaning of the Sejuris uh, token and also our American Covenant Trust. So, and, and this is the tokenization uh, for them. So, and that's our, our home page. So, let me go ahead and just have one. Uh, either Nerva or Mary Lou ask a question about any of these pages that we have here from money, community, wallet, metaverse, pre-sale, uh, DEX, and so forth. Well, what would be, uh, Mary Lou, what would be one of your main questions concerning uh, the site? Hello, Dino and Tim and Nerva. Uh, my question is, how do you incorporate the token into the tr to the trust? Oh, incorporating uh, the trust. Well, that's probably the easiest thing to do. Uh, so each um, uh, wallet that you have um, is assigned to uh, a trust type. So you have the public, you have the pass-through, and you have the master and holding trust. So... Uh, the account numbers, the, the accounts for the wallets, the same thing that secures the wallet itself is placed into the rest um, of uh, the trust. So it's written into the trust. So That's uh, awesome. Yeah, so regardless of, of what uh, the amounts are, you'll have uh, what they call a cold storage wallet. Uh, so that's um, every day. It, it's kind of, you know, the changes that are made uh, within the accounts and the results uh, are placed into the cold wallet. And then 
you know, the minutes for the trust uh, could make note of any changes, anything significant, increase, decrease, so forth. So the minutes actually track and validate the amount of, uh, within of the exchange that that's being vested into the trust. So you'll have Thank three. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. So there's three separate. There's uh, three separate ones. Let me uh, pull up on my little video here. I'm going to show this. Okay, I'm going to just uh, lower the, the sound on this. So this talks about, and this is something that we're going to be having on the site as well. Uh, but also sent out, you know, for a promotion. So this is the introduction of the tokenization of real world assets. That's another way of saying trust, uh, digitizing your trust. So um, I'm going to connect to the EPU, Decentralized Distributed uh, Trust Network. Uh, first by uh, going on uh, to uh, the site, the home homepage and the exchange address. And uh, then uh, you, you're going to, let me go ahead and play this forward. Now, one of the first uh, tokens that we were talking about is Juris. And that goes together with creating the ir irrevocable trust. Uh, and I put web in um, parentheses, because what we're talking about is the public pass-through and holding trust. Um, and this is something that uh, secures, one secures the other. And it also allows you to deal with different aspects. Uh, if you're dealing with public uh, agencies and corporations and things of that nature, you would use one type of trust. Uh, the pass-through trust is a little bit more neutral. And then on the private side, when uh, you want to keep things <clears throat> uh, private, that's uh, you would use that trust to, uh, and conduct um, activities and manage uh, the activities there. Okay, so establishing the trust, and that's one of the, uh, the reasons why we have, um, hold on. happened here okay. <clears throat> okay so let me go back just a little bit uh, we we lost uh mary lou for a second so we're going to bring her back on mm -hmm. and... <clears throat> so uh one of the the first uh tokens we have is uh this juris uh status token and that one, okay, someone's got their speaker open. Uh, you have a computer and your phone working at the same time, so. Okay, there you go. Yeah, whenever the phone uh, and the computer come together, it's like, you know, uh, a whole bunch of frequency confusion. So, <clears throat> uh, I apologize. I couldn't hear on the phone, so I had to put it on the laptop and oh, I'm no, able no. to hear it. <laughs> okay, now you can switch back and forth. I know. Okay. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, talking about the Sejuris, uh status token, it's a uh, utility use will allow those who have it depending on the value at the time, it could be one, it could be five, it could be 10, it could be a hundred um, tokens, but we're going to utilize, they would use those tokens in order to establish their trust. And if they get a trust web. Uh, so those services would be made available through the use of the token, secure status token. Um, so, uh, and that that's throughout the community and that later on when we have other services that we can provide um, uh, to assist them, 
or someone else has uh, services that they ha uh, have available, uh, they will accept this is your uh, status token and exchange in, in lieu of um, no fiat. So that's also one of the other reasons why we set it up like this. And since you're a trust, uh, all that remains protected, private. Okay. Uh, um, question. Sure. Question, uh, for the no. so all these tokens will be backed by different assets, right? Uh, well, uh, since it's on the Binance mm -hmm. exchange, uh, BNB, uh, uh, the tokens will be uh, given liquidity through okay. uh, the Binance token. However, all of the tokens will be backed by silver. By silver, okay. Because the, the stable coin that stabilizes the exchange, the EPU, the uh, E Pluribus Unum uh, token, is paired with silver. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so uh, just as you would create a trust, you would also create a trust wallet. So uh, a lot of people get confused because there's literally a wallet called trust wallet. So uh, it's a decentralized wallet. That means um, uh, that people um, uh, are custodials of, 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 of the tokens. Um, and they handle everything. They don't have to rely on a, a centralized exchange. Uh, so they're in control, which fits with uh, what we're trying to show people, how to um, you know, become more involved in their own affairs directly and not rely on others. <laughs> okay, so creating the trust wallet so you'd have <clears throat> uh, the the link to the EPU exchange, the MetaMask uh, wallet, the Exodus wallet, and the Trust wallet. Now, at some point, uh, our exchange will become uh, a blockchain and it will have its own wallet. Um, a a uh status wallet. So, but, and that's, you know, project for down the line. So um, <clears throat> uh, set up and connect wallets, add a uh, Binance Smart Chain Network uh, to the MetaMask account. So a lot of these accounts can, uh, you can exchange between the different wallets. So say that um, Ethereum popped off in your public, um, your public wallet, right? And you want to take whatever you made, the difference between uh, what you originally had there and, and the increase, and you want to uh, protect it or uh, send it back to the holding wallet. You can uh, trade between uh, these wallets, whether it's the pass-through wallet, the public wallet to the pass-through wallet, or the public wallet to uh, uh, the trust wallet, uh, the, master, uh, the master holding trust. So you can see um, that they'll be able, uh, the same way that you would exchange resources, you wouldn't have to do it through a bank. You'd be able to trade those resources instantly between different trusts. Okay, also, uh, you'll be able to swap uh, the tokens too. So say uh, you have some, uh, you have some uh, Sejuris, but you also want to get ACT tokens because you want to support uh, veteran activities and projects um, or services, get services that are provided by the veterans. Uh, then you would uh, trade your Sejuris tokens for the ACT. And you'd be able to do that uh, instantly on the on the platform in the swapping platform.
Okay. And then uh, what we have is our uh, cold wallets. So the cold wallets are, are directly connected with the, the trust. Um, so within the indenture of the trust, it will specify that all uh, digital asset tokens, uh, digital um, uh, property, uh, digital tokens, uh, NFTs, and so forth, uh, within a particular account or wallet, uh, be vested uh, within the trust, uh, and you uh, and secured by a cold wallet. This is uh, cold storage. So this is where. Uh, at the end of the day or the end of a week or whatever time period you want, whatever is specified within the trust, <clears throat> um, that amount uh, will be loaded onto the cold wallet and will be held with the trust documents. So, and of course, it's trust yourself to succeed. We'll play on words there. <clears throat> now, what I'm going to do is just for fun, I'm also going to play it through. It's a very short video, but I want to play it with the sound so you can get the full effect when it's on um, online and uh, it's being promoted. So one of the things that we're going to do is anyone who promotes this video uh, will get a certain amount of um, Sejuris uh, status tokens or act tokens um, by promoting this to people that they know. So with the trust, I made some changes here uh, because people were concerned <clears throat> about its presentation and some of the imaging. Now, um, as an affiliate, uh, I do have uh, access to um, the trust uh, Private Wealth Academy, Bulletproof Trust Workshops. But mm -hmm. that, that's optional. That's not what we're doing. Actually, I have my own workshop. <laughs> or classes that I do. In fact, it says I'm on classes here. <clears throat> uh, navigate the reset. Trust me. This is our trust uh, uh, class, and show me the money. Those those uh, the classes that we're going to also offer. And instead of people having to you know go into their bank accounts, they just go into their token account. Uh, they would book um, uh, classes with uh, act tokens or Sejuris tokens or EP tokens. Well, any token that has value. Let's put it that way. We're not going to just uh, take ours or take others as well. Um, 
uh, one of the presentations and what we are doing uh, for uh, people just coming on. So we have a structured uh, presentation as well. So people can get familiar with uh, what I just explained to you. So you'll see here, uh, this is an example, Chief Corporal Zoom Exchange, Dino Mendoza, Executive Trustee. And this is what we're trying to, uh, we're, we're trying to get what people have already established. So people that have established their own trust, we extend that trust to the trust web. And then we help them connect their, their wallets and their, their token, uh, tokens to their trust. Um, so this way they can manage it. Yeah, but they're also protected that way too. Uh, oh, the, the whole point of the Sejura status, Sejura is meaning a one's own right without uh, you know, being handicapped or relying on uh, uh, someone else or another entity. So we definitely want to trust yourself. You can do this. <clears throat> That's what Sejuris means. So get your act together. Uh, that's tokens, but also uh, coming together as far as the American Covenant Trust. So the American Covenant Trust is one that uh, sponsors and, uh, uh, programs and uh, services for veterans and their families. And that becomes important because uh, within any given community, there are veterans. Uh, they hold a very special uh, place within society. Um, they're not just the ones that we remember, you know, like on November 11th, uh, thank you for your service. Uh, they have an active, if not very well understood, uh, function because in order to live up to their oath of, uh, enforcing of the constitution, uh, uh, against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That means here as well, from our own uh, public agencies and, and uh, offices and officials um, uh, within our government. They are looking out after our civil liberty. So um, it makes sense to you know, be there and be supportive of activities. That's what the main reason, we, and that's the use case behind of the act token, by the way. It's to build that within the, uh, the community, virtual or real, uh, you know, uh, real world. <clears throat> and this is um, an organizational chart that kind of discusses that. Committed to creating innovative solutions, better to serve the community. Our latest project is, to, uh, is a decentralized network that utilizes blockchain techno technology to provide secure efficient and reliable method of asset management. We believe this project has the potential to revolutionize the way individuals and businesses transact. Now, the reason being is, is because what we're talking about is most people aren't sejuris. Most people rely on some type of system or agency uh, uh, to conduct their lives, whether it's employment, whether it's, you know, uh, uh, services, uh, uh, DMV, you know, some of uh, uh, the agencies getting permission. Uh, uh, if you have a small business, you have to uh, register that and get their permission and so forth. So, uh, and then there's lawyers and the legal system in the court, which all, um, take away the power and the, the ability for people to do things uh, within their own interest. Not to say that they don't have a function, they've had a function, but a majority of that power and control has been elsewhere, not with the, the individual. So we're gonna show them how to do something different. The 
purpose of the organization model is to provide employment opportunity to prior military service members and their families through a number of for-profit businesses that perform public work. Now, the reason why they have to be for-profit businesses uh, is because uh, they should be compensated for the work that they'll be doing. Um, we're not asking them to volunteer. They should be recognized. Uh, and these, this is a structure that's familiar to most people. Uh, this uh, executive administrative uh, model in which uh, there are different um, uh, officers or departments that have functioned uh, within a given community. So it just, it's put into very structured In addition to employment, volunteer positions for military will be given training and instruction on constitutional law enforcement. Uh, the workshops and seminars will also be extended to the public. So, and here you have the, uh, the tokens that uh, that exist. Well, two of them anyway on two different platforms: secure, uh, secure status and the COE, constitutional law enforcement. Uh, that's our transport token. And then we have uh, like uh, community functions. So uh, they surveil and their security and they also assist uh, people within the community. Uh, so that's their uh, uh, token there. And then uh, the marshal. So uh, anyone who brings to the attention of people a uh, constitutional law jurisdiction that's the token that they receive. So what we're trying to do is incentivize at the same time and teach people how to do that. Hopefully this doesn't become too academic. There should be a funness about this and that's what we're trying to do, but it's a learning experience. So people are profiting financially, but they're also by uh, uh, handling their own affairs they're also learning the importance of civics. Yeah, or it gives a, a, a reason to speak to their neighbors uh, or other people in the community. Okay, and this is uh, the Civil Liberties Enforcement Committee and Trust. And these are uh, some of the services that we have directly connected with them. And these are tokens that are going to be placed on. And what grants uh, the people constitutional law enforcement jurisdiction, the ninth and tenth amendments, and that's part of what we're going to be teaching people. So this uh, this goes to the right of contract as well, the right to establish a trust and operate a trust, uh, whether it's digital or not. And we also explain the difference between fiat money, constitutionally authorized, nature of obligation or redemption of fiat money, uh, redeeming lawful money. Some of this is familiar for anyone who, who, who's taken uh, some of the trusts or classes or been on uh, those presentations. <clears throat> so we're still covering that. A revocable and irrevocable trust and what the differences are. So that trust created by individuals who jurists may do whatever individuals who jurists may do. And that's part of uh, a quote from one of the footnotes. Uh, uh, within the Wise Concise Trust Handbook. <clears throat> and these are some of the things that, some of the skills that we're going to also be uh, showing people as well. So is there any questions about that? Um, I Go ahead, Neva. Talking, so. For the trust wallet? Or for the tr yeah, I did have a question regarding the trust, the brother Dino. Uh, I know you mentioned earlier, earlier, uh, I saw when you played the video, there were like 
different step to get into the platform. And then um, I know the first thing, the first thing I saw was to create the trust first, right? The, um, the trust, that's the first thing to do to start to get into the uh, trust wallet. Well, you know what? You can do it simultaneously. I mean, mm -hmm. you can create both the trust as well as the trust wallet, or you can create the trust wallet first. Um, some people think it makes more sense to have something to put into the trust. So they'll start with a trust wallet. Okay. Um, of course, we want to explain to them when they're selecting the, uh, the wallet. So it's not going to be oh, you know, I like this wallet because it's, uh, it's got nice colors and a great logo. Uh, or look at the cute little fox and his head spins around when you point, uh, point the pointer in different directions. That's not the reason why you get the wallet. It's going to have a, a real function. So each wallet is going to serve to protect one aspect of um, the trust for, for them. So they're, they'll be uh, becoming familiar with that. Uh, you know, with the use of, of, the, of the wallet and the tokens, maybe um, they'll start thinking, you know, uh, within uh, a very logical plan, you know, critical thinking type of method um, for, you know, what they do uh, on the exchanges as well. You know? And then I, I have another, I mean, this, this is somewhat more like a question from the way, um, I can comment too, right? Or just questions? No, no, you can comment, of course. Because I, I, I know the way that you presented the, the, cent the um, centralized the decentralized platform. And I know that the, 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 the purpose is like, it's, um, it's more like, it will, I, I feel like it will empower the communities more instead of, you know, and um, they will have more like, um, they, they will have more, more, more choices. They can, they will have more, they can think for themselves more with their decentralized platform. Yes, absolutely. Um, that's absolutely. one of the benefits and th that's going to really what's going to come out of this. So, um, I think people more apt if they're looking at doing something together with people that they know, they share an interest, a circle of friends or family. If they talk about this and say, hey, look, I'm going to show you. And DuCoin captured this. So uh, uh, the family community type of thing. But yes. the, the problem is it's not decentralized. And, and uh, the interest doesn't always align with all the members. Sometimes it, it's a little bit more in the advantage of, okay. of uh, whoever's hosting it. But this becomes the interest of everybody. Everyone benefits from this. It's decentralized. No one owns it. And yeah. everyone adds to it, and every, uh, everyone is able to benefit from it equally, you know, according to how they operate on it. Yeah, this one, I can see a big advantage of it on it for the community. And uh, so when I talk about community, I talk about um, uh, the trust wallets. I talk about the public. So the public agencies. And then the pass through uh, is more, you know, uh, 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 personal, you know, interest. And then there's private you know, where it's, you know, no one's business but your own. So, and that's also how people are anyway. So most people are, uh, they want to be able to share something that's going to help somebody uh, else, even if they don't know them. Just, they have that altruistic nature. They just want, they want to see people benefit. And then there are some people who, uh, you know, uh, have something specific in mind, a project in mind. You know, they're working towards something. They got a goal. So this uh, exchange also allows them to do that, too. Um, they can build their own value in assets on the platform. And that's, that's a feature I just didn't want to introduce at this moment because it's confusing enough for people to begin to understand what um, these decentralized distributed networks actually do. But they're, they are designed to help uh, bring together virtual communities, and they will also help 
real world communities as well. Thank you. All right. That's uh, the future of distributed, uh, the future of work and distributed organization. This is about reconnecting, people reconnecting with, uh, with themselves and, and others. Okay, so um, any other comments? Do uh, uh, you want to share something, Mary Lou? Is there an observation, something that's not clear, something that you like? Um. My question is, it says here decentralized. <clears throat> what is the difference between centralized and decentralized? Okay, well, with uh, centralized, that's what we're used to now. So what you have is you have authoritative agencies uh, that determine that uh, have you either register or get license or get permission and they regulate uh, through codes and ordinances and stat uh, uh, statutes, what people uh, in societies uh, and communities and states and towns and cities, what they're able to do and not to do. Um, uh, and uh, most of your governmental uh, agencies are centralized in that way. They perform, uh, they perform a service that's supposed to be um, neutral just holding up standards uh, for people to be able to follow. Where the decentralized is people dealing directly with each other, and particular commerce and trade. Because usually uh, if you uh, make a purchase, whether it's at a gas station, grocery store, um, department store, uh, there are many hands that are in that transaction. Now, they made it very simple so you don't notice it. All you got to do is swipe your card or tap it now um, or use your phone. And you won't know that there's all sorts of uh, people benefiting from it. And that's the reason why things are so uh, expensive. <clears throat> but with this, there's no one else in the middle. Uh, there's just you and whoever else uh, you're dealing with, you know, for product or service or remits um, uh, or just, you know, basic exchanges, you know, uh, trading or um, gifting or uh, whatever uh, people do um, uh, as, as far as their, their normal course of life. They, they won't have to run into uh, too many restrictions uh, and it means that the system operates on its own. Uh, so everyone plays by the same rules. So it's just like the Constitution. I love the constitutional principles because they're natural law principles. They're immutable, just like uh, the blockchain. That once the code is written, it favors no one. It doesn't make a difference how many uh, uh, suits you have or, you know, what your title is, or, you know, the, you know, your status in, in society is, you have to follow the same rule, because it's encoded, it's, it's crypt, uh, it's crypto, it's cryptic, it's uh, mathematical, it, it cares not, it has no emotions. Um, and it never fails. Because <clears throat> it's done, it, it just does that one thing. That's the central line. Centralized meaning uh, performing. Uh, so to, to do what it's told to do, regardless, equal uh, fairness uh, and a kind of digital justice, I guess. You know, justice for all. So that's what the difference is. Um, in a centralized system, the, the people uh, who have the gold make the rules. And, uh, you know, you're as guilty as, uh, you know, uh, or you'll serve time, um, you know, based on, you know, how 
good of a lawyer you can afford. <clears throat> uh, some some people commit crimes, and the reason why they stay out of jail is because they are able to keep the system going. They keep on putting money into the system. The system is designed to take money. You know, so the more money you have, the more you can stall. You know, final justice, even if you're guilty. So. Um, that's probably a little bit more than most people want to know about decentralized and centralized. But uh, so there's, there's nothing to get in the middle. It's peer to peer. It, it doesn't have to go through an intermediary uh, process. So uh, nothing gets in the way. So and it's able to move very quickly. Quick question, Dino. Yes. So for, uh, uh, as far as decentralization, so it's like, is there more, there's more transparency, right? Um, in decentralization. Well, well, that's not decentralization so much, even though that's part of it. It's part uh, of it? Okay. That's block, uh, uh, that, that would be blockchain. Oh, black, so, okay. So the blockchain uh, makes information data uh, visible, public. Uh, and not only is it transparent, to, so anyone can see it. Here, let me give you a B scan. An example. Oops. Blockchain Explorer. Okay, so this BSC uh, uh, scan. So any hashtag you can search in here, and it's a database. It brings up all the information related to that database, uh, related to that address. It doesn't hide it from anyone. Now, what does this mean? This means that there's no more second guessing. You don't have to rely on someone to be truthful, you know, about what they say. Um, uh, you can also see and hold people accountable, you know, based on uh, uh, their behavior, you know, within the exchange. Uh, and it's also uh, immutable, almost impossible to, to hack or to change. So that makes everything fair. What we're talking about is fairness here, I guess. When you talk about blockchain in connection with uh, tokenization, decentralized um, systems, what you're talking about is fairness, that everyone's playing by the same rules. And, and that, that becomes important because that's the American dream. That's, you know, everyone has a shot. Not just you know those who were uh, born uh, in the favorable conditions or family names or whatever. <clears throat> um, so let me. Uh, I, I'd like to use uh, an example, but whatever example I use is not going to uh, be good. So, but uh, I'll do a class on that, and uh, what I'll do is I'll show. Uh, people and it's not just um, a BSC scan. Uh, BSC works with uh, the Binance, but you also have e uh, Ether Scan too. So Ether Scan does it with uh, ERC tokens, and then you also have GRW Scan. Oops, oh, wait. No. not IO. Mm. Oops. <clears throat> so, so you'll see here. <laughs> 
Okay, I can't help it. Uh, but um, American Covenant uh, Act 20,000, uh, 124 addresses. That means 124 holders uh, have it. So this is the power here. These are the transactions that have been done. Yeah. I see mine there. <laughs> uh -huh. Now, now uh, the anonymity comes with the fact that, well, you just volunteered you, uh, yourself because you recognize your uh, your account, but most people wouldn't. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? So this is this is proper accounting. This is anonymity, but also total transparency. Now, of course, um, uh, our wallets are trust. So anything ending, you know, in our four digits is protected under trust law. So, yes, we can tell them, hey, look, yeah, these are transactions. But guess what? You can't look at them. <laughs> you can't even ask us about them. Not without a court order. <clears throat> It's, it's privacy. It's about control. It's about, uh, but uh, if you know what to look for, uh, and this is uh, transfers, and there's been quite a few, 816 transfers, and it tells you what type of token it is, ERC. That means it's built on the Ethereum network. And these are uh, the accounts that are involved. Tells you and how long. And Transfer like this one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so this account has two tokens and ERC GUSD in. Wrap GRW, and it tells you how many that they're holding. You don't have any of this, do you? GRW, uh, wrap GRW. No. Yeah, well, it tells you it's an administrative um, account. <clears throat> That's a good example. Yes. So, but like I said, it, anyone that has access to uh, the internet can actually access and see what's going on in other people's what's happening with tokens you know so I know what's going on I've been looking at this stuff and regardless of what's said I know what the truth of the matter is and I know how to find the truth if I don't know and that's the juris status Making certain, and it makes it a lot easier this way. So, <clears throat> uh, so, um, so, what was your question? I forgot. I'm sorry. There was this question there. No, no, it was. Um, no, I was. Talk, I was. I. I did ask if it. Um, decentralized show more transparency than than centralized, and you showed me that example, which was good. Yeah, and that's blockchain. That's blockchain technology. That's, that's why they hate it. Yes. Uh, it's it's hated by all central entities because what it means is they're no longer useful, or at some point they will become obsolete. It, for them, blockchain is is like catching a chronic disease. So it it might not kill you right away, but sooner or later it will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's not a bad thing. You know, the, the Constitution, if you look at the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, those were established in order to change out of one type of society into another. And that's all we're talking about here, you know, from centralized to decentralized. But some people 
are so used to the power and so used to the corruption and living in the shadows. You know, they don't want the light of day. They don't want the light of truth. They don't want people to know, you know, what they're really doing. So, yeah, I can see, I can see why they feel the way that they do. And let, uh, here's the Rockefellers and the Morgan um, uh, family tree. This, this is where the trust uh, is best exampled. So corporations do this. This is how they protect their assets. <clears throat> But that is the right of the natural being, not just the artificial being. That's a natural being's right to protect themselves. Okay, so um, is there? Um, let me see. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna go back to um, uh, the site. So here, you talk, it talks about decentralized distributed networks briefly. And click here. People are just unum. This goes into it in a little bit more depth. Um, now, here's the interesting thing. You might have questions about this. How about the metaverse? Did you know, um, Mary Lou, that we were doing metaverse? Mary Lou, you, you have microphone case. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> was no, you were dozing I, off? I'm sorry. <laughs> I just want to make sure that, you know, we're quiet and stuff like that so uh -huh. yes i've seen that in in the telegram so i feel and i saw that it says metaverse right there so yeah i'm aware that we're going to be using metaverse well yeah and we're really excited about it because um you know i've been in talks and discussions with people already so we're going to build our own little virtual world and awesome. this this and this for anyone you know, uh, as long as they can uh, afford, you know, uh, to put it together themselves, which most people should after a while, then create their own little space uh, in the metaverse uh, okay. to go to. But I, I got other uh, plans for it. And one of the things that we're going to be doing is music. So, um, uh, <clears throat> But um, along the lines of uh, what other people that um, can benefit, how other people can better benefit from this is, is uh, if the next time they have some type of crisis or whatever, and there are restrictions placed, um, they'll still be able to do their shopping without having to rely on Amazon. I mean, I don't know. I think Amazon made. I don't know, billions of dollars during the last crisis. <clears throat> well, this type of platform actually takes um, uh, those, uh, the capabilities that people you would usually have, you know, walking or driving, going to places and places that, you know, in a virtual way. Uh, and since it's an exchange as well, you know, they can, they can get the things that they need that way. This is the, one of the most scariest things for uh, the current economic um, uh, structures. This is what scares the central banking system and, and the current markets, the metaverse. So all uh, those, uh, you know, weird people, you know, that used to spend like, you know, uh, 20 hours, you know, uh, you know, playing video games and their parents used to say, you know what, you, you, there's no way you, you can't make a career out of that. You can't make a living out of that. 
Well, now that's not true. <laughs> now that changes. <clears throat> so, um, so I, I I know that there has to be an end to this uh, presentation, but I I I feel like I've done more talking um, than I've actually allowed for questions. So let me let me stop for a moment and let let someone ask a question if you have one. Do you, Mary Lou and Nerva, do you feel like um, that that everything? Do you have any questions and and that it was explained to your uh, under, understanding exactly why um, we have this platform? I I understand I understand, but I had one more last question for if my I don't know if it's important. Yeah. <laughs> but I, can I ask it anyway? Yeah, sure. So, I probably know the answer, but I just want to confirm it. Uh, like what type of, I know, I know they have different type of decentralization. Um, they have like, um, is it like political, administrative, fiscal? They have, they're all different types, right? Decentralization. Well, well no, that's centralized. Yeah. Oh, that's that, central. That's yeah, centralized. that's centralized. Now, yeah, oh. that's centralized. Um, that's, uh, yeah, because they, they, they're central on whatever particular area they're dealing in. Now you can have a theme, you know, for an exchange, but it makes oh, no man. sense. The distributed network allows people to build uh, as a community from their own interests. So if they're interested in clean air, then uh, people who are on the, uh, the exchange could establish a token. Um, and that's what the token does, is it establishes an interest um, uh, to bring either awareness, to educate, to finance, uh, you know, to construct uh, whatever is necessary uh, for that value asset, you know, for that value for the community. That's also the advantages of uh, a decentralized network. Instead of giving money to uh, um you know, politicians or donating to uh, organizations, you know, not that those things in the past didn't have its function. Now you can actually say, hey, look, you know, I have this complaint about, you know, this uh, particular uh, park, you know, or uh, this particular project is uh, something that we need in our neighborhood. You know, they can do that without having to go to like the city council or uh, the state, you know, uh, or the federal uh, government agencies to get things done. I'm, I'm pretty sure there'll be some involvement, but not as much as there has been. So the decentralized. Uh, now, you do have um, some that, that pretend to be uh, decentralized that are really centralized. They use all the words necessary because mm -hmm. those are buzzwords, you know. They'll say, you know, uh, decentralized, but really it's centralized. They, they quack like ducks, but they're, they're not. <clears throat> um, uh, and those hybrid type of uh, exchanges are the ones that sooner or later there's an end to them. Uh, the real, the real uh, aspect of these exchanges is, is that there is no end to them. It, it, uh, like companies, you have, you know, you'll have some that run longer than others or shorter, but there is usually an end. With these exchanges, there's not going to be an, uh, an end to it because there's always going to be someone new. So that's that's one of the songs that I I, I have. It's the the whispers, <laughs> and and the beat goes on. What's that? What what you all had just pointed out that that essentially um, well there are a lot of good points. That there's no hierarchy. That that is the point I think, and the transparency is very important as well. Um, but it's, it is community-based, an ecosystem on its own, and uh, the, the members um, can be incentivized, and that doesn't happen on the centralized platforms. So everyone brings value with their own interest and, and input, so you can actually, there's no gridlock 
there's no um, hierarchy or um, at the top, essentially um, hiding things. And then um, um, you get more, you can get a lot more done because it's in the interest of, of, of the all of, of everyone on the platform. And that brings a lot more value to um, individuals via the tokens and to the community. And so that in itself is just, I think, a phenomenal, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It, 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 it's just um, the fact that another point I wanted to make with you keep saying um, immutable, I think is important because you can't change anything on it because of the blockchain. And I think that is invaluable um, um, feature of it. You can't hide anything. So everyone can all can see what is actually um, uh, happening on the, on the platform. So, um, but go ahead, Dino. I, I yield the floor. There, there's so much that I could say, but I'll do that on another call. No, you, can another say, Zoom. you can say whatever you want. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, I was looking for the little tabs, but, um, it's, it's the word I'm looking for. It's this infinite because you, you can just build with, with, with the community and everyone having their input into, into the community and, and the different, um, in, unincorporated businesses. And, um, it's just, um, what's the, there's a word I'm looking for. It, it's, never ending the the potential of 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 a platform like this and then the power of having the the, the ultimate privacy um and um not having uh you know your your assets um your assets are protected on it because of the trust and um i just could go on and on about it but um I think you pretty much did a phenomenal job covering it. I, I, if the ladies had um, any questions, any more questions at all, um, I think you covered the wallet um, and the importance of it. Um, also, um, I think the, the the ultimate sugar on top of the of the cake is that it you know it, it supports civil liberties and the veterans, which uh, protect the people. So. Um, multiple dimensions of um, benefits to the platform. I'll give the floor, Dino. Mm. Um. <laughs> no, you're, you're fine. You're fine. Okay. Uh, Ladies, you know, do you have any questions? You guys, you did wonderful. Yes, go ahead, Dino. No, I was just going to put on the whispers. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. No, I don't have any more questions at this time. Yeah. So, uh, but I appreciate you, uh, you know, taking time out uh, and coming on the call and and uh, after reviewing uh, the site, having very insightful questions. And I'm pretty sure there are going to be many uh, other questions that come up because um, most people have not uh, been exposed uh, to the true nature of what they call, quote unquote, cryptocurrency. It, it's been... Um, uh, uh, oppressed to a certain extent uh, uh, because of the technology behind it, the blockchain and the real threat to administrative law uh, agencies and um, uh, the executive uh, branches um, uh, within uh, local uh, state and federal governments realize it's a signal that um, uh, things are changing and they can't stop it. Um, but it's it's up to the people, you know, uh, how quickly that's going to happen if they're paying attention. Uh, so something like this, this type of exchange based on uh, uh, the ecosystem, the distributed, uh, decentralized distributed network that we're developing, um, even um, code statutes and um, executive orders uh, are not going to have the same, you know, helpless acknowledgement uh, that they've had in the past. There's going to be something said 
is going to be something that people can do to, to help themselves and help each other. So, and that's, that's the whole point of this, of this platform. So, and with that, and with that, I yield the floor. Okay, so, um, so what we're, uh, I'll just, uh, one last thing before I, I turn this off. I just wanted to mention uh, pre-sale. Uh, we're going to continue with a pre-sale um, for the Sejuris token. Uh, and uh, that's from now until uh, the beginning of the year. So we're going to extend uh, the pre-sale, uh, but it's at, it doesn't make a difference. There is going to be a discount uh, and the value, just like the act and um, uh, the CLE tokens on other platform um, platforms uh, been, uh, grew. Uh, this one's going to grow even um, uh, faster and it's going to be uh, a very um, uh, okay. beneficial, very beneficial to uh, those who get in now. But the point is, is that this is, uh, it has no real limit to it. So anyone who's starting now is going to benefit a great, a great deal. And that's, we want to get as many people, um, you know, on this as possible. <clears throat> 